So we have David here from the film just came out June 13th, documentary Elemental, Reimagining Wildfire, out now on digital. So David, what was it that originally attracted you to this project? Was this something personal to you, you know, in terms of the fires out on the West Coast and you have families and or maybe friends involved in, in situations like this? What was the real calling for, for you to, to be the narrator for this fantastic documentary? Um, yeah, I've lived in Los Angeles for nearly 16 years now. And um, even in that time, which is relatively short in relation to the history of wildfires, I've seen an indisputable increase in them um, in California generally, but across the country and globally, actually. Um, you know, a, an increasing number of family members in the UK calling me, am I okay? You know, they see the news. And I don't remember when I lived in the UK thinking that about California, thinking, gosh, I hope those people are okay. But sure. year on year now, you know, a friend or two will call to say, is everything okay out there, which is indicative of a, a situation that is growing. Um, and, and so it's definitely very concerning. Uh, I, I have a personal friend who lost their entire home to uh, a fire and it was one of these fires where the fire was far away but embers got into i think the guttering they they you know i guess they investigated it and, and figured out that's what it was because you went to the neighborhood and it was the only house that burnt down so that really brings home the fact that it's not just your proximity to fire. It's the fact that if you're in the region where embers are flying and you're not, you know, uh, you, you haven't hardened your house as as the, the documentary illustrates that, you know, th this could happen to anyone within several miles of, of these wildfires. Gotcha, gotcha. And that, that's one thing I really, it, it brought a lot of light to me. And I know one of the taglines for this film is, uh, you know, people in um, in the West Coast should watch it, but I honestly feel like people in North America should watch it, especially with the wildfires going on in Canada right now. I mean, I'm in North Carolina, and wildfires aren't normal around here, but to me, we're one country, you know, so if it affects California, it affects us here as well. And, you know, what was your take when it when it came to this process? Was this a script that was sent your way? And, or, you know, how did you kind of, did you find out about it? Like, how, what was that like? Well, you know, as as an actor, you 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 tend to be involved, or I tend to be involved primarily with fictional telling of stories, and I love that. You know, yeah. I, I I love everything about that. But when every now and again, when something comes along that could literally save people's lives, just the yeah. knowledge of it, um, of course, that's going to be something that's going to grab your attention. Let alone, you know, the state I now live in, uh, but California. It's 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 being seriously affected by this, but also I think just the documentary's ability to draw the parallels between um, traditional methods of uh, uh, protecting against this, combined with technological methods, combined with scientific methods, and how those are applicable personally to your own home to your own environment i think the job uh, the 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 documentary does a great job of making it very relatable whether you live in those environments or not and makes it actionable it's not one of those climate documentaries you watch and at the end of it you're so depressed because you don't feel like there's anything you can do there's literally stuff you can do personally to your environment to your own home educating other people in in and i've done se severally with just like literally things about it, during fire season things to do with your guttering that you know not where we're having um landscaping done right now in which we're absolutely uh making sure that that shrubbery isn't so close to the house that basically acts like tinder should there be um, a fire close by or embers close by. So all of those things kind of uh, made it a no brainer because it's a it's an incredibly um, educational, but it, more more the so than anything informative uh, documentary. Incredibly informative and you bring such a great voice to it as as an actor when when you're doing a documentary like this, you feel 
I guess you could say maybe less pressure, uh, you know, as far as the, I've always been curious when it comes to narr- like the narration process for a documentary, what is that like when you're getting direction from the filmmakers and things like that, as far as the process goes in between, all right, we have maybe this deadline and we need you to record this. Like, what's that like for, you know, in terms of, obviously it's different than, and then I don't want to say regular acting, but what's the narration pra- uh, process like for, for documentaries, I guess you could say. Yeah, well, the director and producer on this were, they are incredibly entrenched in this world. They're not just sort of making it as jobbing uh, documentary makers. They are in, it, very invested in the information, very involved with this community of people trying to bring the awareness about how to combat these wildfires. So they they did a great job with me of you know, helping me with my blind spots, helping me with the things I knew nothing about and making sure that I gave the correct amount of import to different moments uh, of the documentary. So I was very well guided. Um, No, I wasn't I wasn't nervous. I, I just I felt honored more than anything to to be part of something that I think could um, should it be widely seen, which is what we hope, mm-hmm. really uh, affects change. Because like I say, not only on a personal level is it advocating the things that could help save people's lives and homes, yeah. but on a, on a national and global level, there, there are very real, traditional, scientific, and forward-thinking methods to, uh, to stem the, the tide of of the destructive nature of these wildfires. It's true. I mean, one of, one of the lines that uh, that really stuck with me in, in the documentary, there's a lot of great lines in there, obviously, is one of the firefighters. He says, I don't I don't fight fire. I start fires because it's, right. it's like that that have been going around for centuries, which I didn't even know was a thing. I think I, I briefly saw it in, in Zac Efron's documentary show that he has on Netflix where they did it in, in Australia with the Aborigines. So mm-hmm. it was interesting to see it play here in, in North America and how, you know, things like this can help prevent that in the future for, you know, so that way there's still a, a, a West Coast and Canada and things like that. Yeah, it's it's counterintuitive, really, to uh, start a fire to right. prevent worse fires. But if you think about it, you know, these a lot of these environments we have now completely uh, chosen to... Uh, uh, habitate Mm -hmm. um they they you could argue weren't designed for people to live there and there are very natural means by which these fires start without any human um uh, element causing those fires that there's nature already had it down so to speak and i i think generally speaking we tend to be at our most symbiotic in relation to nature when we take nature's lead right. as to what it already was doing what it already is doing as opposed to coming in and imposing our will on the land so when you really find out recognize or realize that fires are actually an essential part of a forest's life right then you can sort of get your head around that methodology but again as we often do, whether it's harvesting oil or, or you know, what we're doing to the climate in terms of how we how we use technology, use cars, whatever it is, yeah. you know, we are thinking about ourselves first. And what this documentary does is it illustrates how actually we end up serving ourselves when we think of nature first. Gotcha. Gotcha. I, uh, well said. Well said. Like I said, it's a very well executed, well shot the, the documentary itself. I'm a big documentary fan, and this one is up there for me as far as just being informative, the visuals, everything. In terms of of your career, I mean, I, I got to tell you, I'm going to tell you this when we first got on. You're you're one of my favorite actors out there. When when Annie approached me and said that you were available for this, you know, I already had watched the documentary, so you know, thank you for for joining me. And, and this has just been great. You got. 82 currently acting credits to your name you've been a director you've been a producer you know you've had quite the journey has Mm -hmm. there been a a point to where you were able to like you know what i've made it you know you started off in in 95 with with tv operas and you know you've worked with the likes of christopher nolan some of the greatest actors out there you know in terms of, of movies and violent year captive the butler you know was there a time where you're just like Yes, you know, I'm, I'm here, Hollywood, like, see me shine. 
Oh, gosh. I think as an actor, generally speaking, not only do you never really feel that, but I don't think you ever want to feel that. You know, if you're if you're an artist, it, it's a it's a constantly moving target. And that's what keeps you inspired. That's what keeps you working hard. But there have definitely been moments uh, where I, 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 I have recognized that I am walking in real time in a circumstance I have dreamt of. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of those was was getting to play Henry the Sixth at the Royal Shakespeare Company when I was quite a bit younger. Another one of those was uh, playing Dr. King in the film Selma, um, getting to direct my own film, The Waterman, which was an, another big ambition of mine to direct a feature film. You know, uh, and I've just played Bass Reeves in a in a in a show um, uh, th that we just finished shooting in Texas. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was one of those kids running around playing cowboys when I was, a, when I was, I don't know, six, seven years old. And, and now I get to do it and people pay me quite nicely for it as well. So, <laughs> you know, um, th th yeah, there have definitely been moments where I've, I've, I've had a, uh, uh, quite the pinch me, um, uh, feeling, but, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's one of the, 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 the blessings for me of having been afforded the opportunity to do the thing I love. Gotcha. I'm glad that you mentioned The Waterman. I wanted to ask, what was that experience like for you being the, the, the director as well as starring in, in your own film? And I mean, it was such a talented cast with Rosario Dawson, Alfred Molina, Maya Miller. What was that like for you? Oh, it was, it was a, a complete dream because, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a big fan of and a lover of storytelling generally but as a director you get to wrap your arms around the the whole thing um and shooting in oregon the pacific northwest such a beautiful part of of the country and, and we were in the woods a lot and um and my job was to make that environment feel magical and i we didn't use we didn't need any cgi to do that and speaking to the the documentary that we're, we're talking about today tragically a year or so two years after we were there wildfires if you watch the waterman now yeah. it doesn't look like that anymore uh you know i'm, I'm hoping it's recovering but but that region um, suffered terrible wildfires that, you know, uh, affected people's homes, certainly the forest. Um, and this, this is very, very old forest. Yeah. Uh, and if you watch The Waterman, you'll see these gnarled, mossy, ancient trees and environment, right. a lot of which I found out is, ha had, had been burned down. So, you know, personally, and, and we couldn't have expected that this would be the case. I'm just glad that we captured its beauty in the film and I hope it'll bounce back. But you know, that, that, uh, that was the beautiful thing for me, getting to do the thing I love, which is tell stories, but in a more total way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, speaking of one of your next projects, uh, I've read as a big passion project of yours, you're writing, producing and starring in Sweet Thunder, the story of uh, Sugar Ray Robinson uh, apparently it's in pre-production now um you know what's going on with that in terms of the film how's the training coming along i mean i, I grew up in a boxing household so right uh, you know boxing matches were a big thing for us growing up especially being puerto rican i was a big fan of macho camacho but i'd always hear about the greats from my dad and my grandfather so i was telling my dad that you were playing sugar ray robinson in this movie he's very excited about it i just love to know and i know it's probably just the last question here you know what how's that how is that coming along well, you know, a, 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 an element of my career, unfortunately for me, has been these uh, passion projects that take an enormously long amount of time to get done. I mean, Selma was seven years. I think we were trying for five years to get The Waterman made. Bass Reeves, which I just did, was eight years. Wow. I did another film called The United Kingdom, which was seven years. Um, Sweet Thunder is now coming on 10 years. You know that I've been trying to get that that made, but uh, so God willing, we 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 will get it done. I, I've I've had a pretty good strike rate with eventually getting there, but uh, it's it's always hard to to go ask people for millions of dollars to uh, tell a story that you deem important and that for whatever reason they they might not quite see it yet. But I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty convincing. So uh, 
you know, uh, ho hopefully uh, you and your dad will be enjoying that one sometime soon. Hopefully. We'll look forward to it. You're a great actor. I can see you being, great, you know, very convincing. I mean, with a family of four, <laughs> you got to be pretty convincing as well. So I know you got a busy press day today. Thank you so much. I, I really do appreciate the time. But, you know, really, you made uh, this guy's day probably my whole year, to be honest with you. It's a pleasure meeting you virtually. My wife and I just got done watching Silo. Your performance was f fantastic in that. So, wow. you know, best of luck to you the rest of this year. Thank you. I appreciate that. That that means a lot to me. Thank you. You got it. You got it.